Second Peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. So we've established that brother Peter gave credence to the writings of brother Paul. And he says that Paul has been given an insight, a Sophia, an insight into the message of, of Christ or into the gospel of Christ from the Old Testament. And he says those that are unlearned, they wrestle with the scriptures to their own destruction. And we took time in the first service to lay quite some foundation. My advice to those of you that are new to the teachings is go back on YouTube and look for the series. It began part one, part two, part three. And we've been laying some very serious foundation. And I'm still going to continue laying the foundation in this service. I'm excited because we're examining quite a number of things here from the Old Testament. We've established that Brother Moses laid the building blocks for Bible doctrine. So every speaker went back to Moses to begin to explain the redemptive and the sacrificial work of Christ from the Holy Scriptures. Look at what Jesus will say here in John chapter 5 verse 39 to 40. John chapter 5 verse 39 to 40. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Now go to verse 45 and 46. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Next verse. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Next verse. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? For if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So in the first service, we concluded by saying that Jesus taught the same way in the Gospels. That the same way Moses taught in the, in the Old Testament was the same way Jesus taught in the four Gospels. That's why Jesus would say, if you didn't believe Moses' writings, you wouldn't believe me because Moses wrote of me. Now, when you hear Moses, we're talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The first five books which lays the foundation or the doctrinal framework for Bible doctrine. Now, Jesus said, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So it appears Moses wrote two things. Number one, he wrote accusation. And number two, he wrote about Christ. So the question is, why will Moses accuse? In Matthew chapter 19, from verse 6 and 7, Jesus said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So Moses is accusing them because of their unbelief. That means Moses presented life to them. He presented the gospel of faith to them. But they were stiff-necked. They were stiff-necked in unbelief. Then Moses accused them. So the gospel for us will be to look at the things concerning Christ. Which is why they were accused. Because they didn't believe the gospel concerning Christ. So the words of Jesus, therefore, can be found in Moses' writings. The same way Moses made a campaign of the coming of Christ and his kingdom, Jesus taught and preached the same way. So we said in the first service that most of what Moses was writing were campaigns. Campaigns. He talked about bread, which is manna. He talked about water from the rock. He talked about all the different symbols that were campaigns that would become a reality in Christ. Then Jesus shows up and begins to campaign. Pray after this manner, our Father which art in heaven, that's a campaign. I am the bread of life. He that eateth me shall never hunger. That's another campaign. I am the water of life. He that drinketh of the water that shall give him will never thirst again. That's another campaign. I give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish. 
That's another campaign. So Jesus went about campaigning about what will happen in the resurrection. That's why in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 44, Jesus now said, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. That all these things, which things? The things I spoke about in my campaign. The things I spoke about in my campaign from what Moses wrote in the Old Testament must be fulfilled. Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophet and in the Psalms concerning me. So he called that water from the rock which Moses gave them to show them Christ the rock. He gave them manna. The same way Jesus ministered, gave them bread in John chapter 6. All the miracles of Jesus can be explained as a fact of redemption. All the miracles, every miracle of Jesus was not just about the miracle. The miracles were a pointer to the redemptive work of Christ. Even in John chapter 2, when Jesus told Mary, woman, my hour has not come. The time for Jesus to turn water to wine. When you look further in John chapter 13, wine was used for the kingdom. You will drink of this in my kingdom. Just like every other miracle of Jesus, he was pointing them to his resurrection. So as it is done with miracles, that's why 75% of the activity of Jesus in the four gospels was teaching. 75% of the activity of Jesus in the four gospels was teaching. That shows you what was primary and what was secondary. The miracles was because of the message. You wonder why it appears like the epistles are silent on miracles. Not because miracles were not going on, but the emphasis was emphasized. The emphasis of the epistles was emphasized now note this if you're making notes right down and everybody should be making notes right now moses therefore accused them for their unbelief is jesus putting a disclaimer on all the words of moses no if he does place a disclaimer on the words of moses then that is his own disclaimer because moses validated jesus Moses validated Jesus, just like John, John the Baptist. Imagine when John seemingly uttered words of dishonor. <laughs> Are you the one that should come or should we look for another? Imagine if you react like that today. You will say, no wonder it's honey and wild beast that is disturbing this man called John the Baptist. But do you know, if you discredit John, that's the end of Jesus' own validation also. Jesus didn't do that. He says, go and show John. Go and tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. The blind see, the lame walk, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Then Jesus concluded, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Wow. Wow. Then Jesus to validate John the Baptist. So you know he was not discrediting John the Baptist. And now when Jesus said the blind see the lame walk. It's not as if when they came and said to Jesus. John said should we ask you are you the real one. Then Jesus walked around and said okay come with me guys. Blind eyes open. No no no. What Jesus was saying is John has been in prison not to know what is going on. But you guys have been around. You know how the blind eyes have been opened. The lame has walked. You all know. Go to the prison and tell John what you have seen. How that blind eyes have been opened. The lame walk. Which is a validation to the fact that I am the one. Now then Jesus went further. In Mark chapter 11 verse. I mean Matthew 11 verse 7 to 11. I like you to read for me. Matthew chapter 11 verse 7 to 11. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went he out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went he out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Next verse. But, went, but what went he out for to see? 
a prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. So Jesus is validating John now that John is more than a prophet. Next verse. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Next verse. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Jesus is saying, look guys, that guy John the Baptist is the greatest of all the prophets. Among all that are born of women, none has written that is greater than John the Baptist. So Jesus validated the ministry of John the Baptist. Perizo prophetis. That is, he is a greater prophet. John is a greater prophet. So Jesus validated him. You won't do Christ any good by discrediting the prophets of the Old Testament. You can explain things in such a way, you will be careful not to cause harm. Remember Jesus said, Moses wrote of me. So Moses will write concerning the incarnation in his books. You're not listening. Moses will write concerning the incarnation in his book. He will write concerning the earthly ministry of Jesus. He will also write concerning rejecting the message of Christ. Now let me ask all of you. Will John also write, I mean will Moses also write concerning the death of Jesus? Huh? Yeah. Will he also write concerning the betrayal of Jesus? Yes. Will he write concerning the sacrifice of Jesus? So will all these details be found in the writings of Moses? Huh? All right, good. Will he also write concerning the resurrection of Jesus? Yes. Will he, will he now cons write concerning all the events that came forth from the resurrection? Huh? Huh? All right, yes. If you're answering, answer well. Will he write concerning the events of the resurrection? Yes. All right, very good. <clears throat> so let's lay some benchmarks as we want to proceed in this teaching. Number one, it means that all the Pauline thoughts will be found in Jesus' words. All the Pauline thoughts will be found in Jesus' words. All the teachings of Paul will be found in the teaching of Jesus. In Luke chapter 24, just before I go into that, so Jesus speaks two things. Jesus speaks two things. Number one, the events that has just happened, the four gospels, his death, his burial, and he explains these events from the Old Testament. Jesus speaks two things. Number one, the events that has just happened, the four gospels, his death, his burial, then he explains all of those from the Old Testament. Then the events that are happening now, of which his disciples are going to partake of. The events that are happening at that time Jesus was talking to them, which the disciples were going to partake of, must also be found in the Old Testament writings. So both the past, the present, and the future of Christ was written or were written in the Old Testament books, Genesis to Malachi. Let's look at the end point of that. Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 45. Luke 24, 44 to 45. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Next verse. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Next verse. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Then opened he their understanding is the word dinogionos. That is, he split their reasoning opened for the first time that they might soon me soon me so understanding dinogio that they might understand soon me okay dinogio understanding understand soon me s u n e m i 
That's the Greek word for understand. That they might tsunami the scriptures. The word tsunami means to sink it together. Remember, it's dinogio, D-I-A-N-O-G-E-O. -E Not that Jesus was splitting their minds open by himself. He just showed them that the scriptures have a common thread. Once they saw that singular revelation of the scriptures, their understanding opened. The moment they could see that the entire scriptures are tied together by a single thread, bam, their understanding was split open for the first time. Now, a common thread about the same event, a common thread about the same engagement and activities. Now, notice the facts. Luke 24, 46. Luke chapter 24 Verse number 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. Now like many things Jesus said, this is not found in any Old Testament book. It is what you can call the exegesis of the Old Testament letters. What you can call the exegesis, the context and concept of the Old Testament letters. This is what you can say was written. Christ must suffer and he must rise the third day. There's no verse like that. This is Jesus' exegesis of the writings of Moses. For example, John 7, 37. Read for me, John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, there's no verse like that in the Old Testament. That is to say, this is the explanation of Jesus. His exegesis from the words of the prophets. Again, this verse is just like that. It's what you can call an interpretation. A dimenua, a dimenua in the Greek, an interpretation. Now notice the next thing he says. That means within the writing of the Old Testament, he explains number one, the events of the cross to the resurrection. He explains number one, the events of the cross to the resurrection of Jesus. Number two, and that, number two, because of the events of the cross to the resurrection, Give me that 46 and 47 again. Please follow this, follow this. I need your thinking caps on. Luke 24, 46 and 47. And said unto them, thus it is written. Hold it. Thus it is written. Now you will never find where it is written. So what Jesus is saying is, this is the summation of what the Old Testament books have written. Thus it is written. And thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So that's number one. Jesus did exegesis on the events of the cross to his resurrection. Then the second thing you must take note of is verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Don't miss this foundation. The second thing is ministry. The first thing is the events of the cross. To his resurrection based on that that repentance and remission of sins should be preached ministry in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem two very cardinal things in the doctrine of christ number one the death the burial the resurrection from the old testament then number two ministry as a result of the death the burial and the resurrection. So the event is important because without the event, the ministry will be useless. It is the event that sets the platform for ministry. So ministry is an offshoot of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Two very important things. The event is the message. The event is the message all from the Old Testament books. You know, I gave you an idea of the word matos in the first service and tor. Matos, M-A-R-T-O-S and tor, T 
G-U-R. The word witnesses. Which was used in the Canaan account. Egypt to Canaan. Witnesses. Spies. Men chosen to go and search the land. So notice that his emphasis of being witnesses here. You shall be witnesses. And ministry here has been said severally. Pay attention here. In the four gospels, for example, when he said, he that will follow me must deny himself, take up his cross. That never happened until the resurrection. It was after the resurrection that they followed him. That will be to bear the sufferings of Christ, which are the sufferings of a servant. To bear the sufferings of Christ, which are the sufferings of a servant. The persecution that comes with it. The choices that come with it. So he prefigures it. And then of course, in mentioning persecution, for example, you cannot but remember to an extent, Abraham, Joseph, the children of Israel, all the prophets persecuted Moses and they prefigured the sufferings of a servant one who is on a divine assignment and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18 read for me mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's right next verse he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned next verse and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues next verse they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Where did Jesus get these words from? He got all of these words from 15, 16, 17, 18, from the Old Testament. From Genesis to Malachi. That's where he put all of this together from. Now, same thing is said in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always to the end of the world. Amen. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. John 20, 21. John chapter 20, verse 21. Now all those words are words from the old. Read for me John 20, 21. They are all words from the Old Testament. Read it. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father had sent me, even so send I you. These words are from the Old Testament still. That you see, this was done prefiguring what you are about to do. This was done in the Old Testament as a prefiguring of what you are about to do. So in Luke 24, 47, repentance and remission of sin will be preached. Keruso. Now, don't forget the martyrs, martyrs, witnesses, martyrs. He calls them in verse, verse 48. Read for me that same Luke 24, 48. And you are witnesses of these things. And you are witnesses, martyrs, witnesses of these things. Now, those of you that were in the first service, can we say you are spies of these things? Huh? Very good. Very good. You are spies of these things. Question. Whose words were those? Whose words were you as spies of these things? Huh? Moses. Then he now says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Those are Isaiah's words. Going into all the world, you shall be witnesses of Moses' words, spies. Going into all the world and preach the gospel. He got that one from Isaiah. There is no single thing Jesus said 
that was from his head. It's all from the Old Testament. Isaiah, put it up for me, 52 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 52 verse number 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith that said unto Zion, something is touching. I've been talking about this since morning. You guys should fix that thing and don't interrupt what we're doing here. I don't know what you guys are doing, but you need to fix it. Okay? That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? That saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Now, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so question who is a witness a witness is someone who saw something himself and tells another a witness is someone who saw something himself and tells another person that is a witness so as we have Thought in this series of in Christ. If you were here last year, we taught in Christ reality season three. We spoke about the Israel of God. And we said the Israel of God is found in Christ. He reworks everything around himself. And this is the gospel. He reworks the Old Testament around himself. Jesus reworks everything around himself. So salvation, the soteria, don't forget where we came from. The sota is in his people. Huh? Huh? The sota is in his people. Lo, I am with you always till the end of the age. So that means the term salvation can also involve Christ doing his work through us. Or Christ living in us. Christ living in us and Christ living through us. Christ living through us. Remember we started with soteria. We said the sota who is present. He is living through us. So he will not give to live. He will give himself. He will not give us salvation to live. He himself is the salvation in his people. The sota himself is the soteria in his people. Please don't miss that. He is the soteria in his people. Remember, we started with soteria, the sota who is present. He is living through us. So when he says, go into all the world and preach, the preacher is Christ. Because the soteria is living in us. So the preacher is Christ. The message is Christ. The message is Christ. He gave them that idea in John 14, 12. When he said, the works that I do shall you do also. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And greater than this. He brings two things to mind. Pay attention. What he was doing in the four Gospels, and the fact that when he said, the works I do, will you do also? He is not saying, what I used to do, will you do also? No. That's not what he's saying. The doing are going to be together. What I used to do, I will do it now in you. I'm no more alone. I'm inside you. So now I will do it in you. 
The works that I do shall you do also. We are going to be doing it together. So the greater is Christ in you together with you doing the work. That's the greater. Greater than this. My doing now is your doing. My doing is your doing. Your doing is my doing. Kabayada. The works that I do will you do also and greater than this because I go to my father. Because <laughs> this is where people follow our teachings casually when they get here they stumble. Because I go to my father is the indwelling. Uh, because I go to my father is the indwelling in the believer. Whatever you ask, that will I do. Why will I do it? Because I'm in you. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. In other words, Jesus is saying, he remains the diaconia. He is the minister. He remains the deacon. You know, I showed you Jesus is a deacon. And I showed you Paul is a deacon also. Okay, so he remains the diaconia or the minister. That's why Paul was careful in Romans 15 8. Even though he was called, you know, he was called, he has called all of us ministers. But look at what he said of Jesus. Romans 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Jesus was the deacon, the diaconia of the truth of God for the circumcision. Jesus is the minister. That's why he was saying 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 5. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 5. Let's say 2 Corinthians, sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. The same Lord in us is carrying out the administrations. So now definitely ministry, the details and the acts of ministry are involved in the subject of salvation. The details and the act of ministry are involved in the subject of salvation. Because the sota is a minister. And the sota is a servant. The savior is a minister. And the savior is a servant. He is also a model son. The prototokos. And also a model servant. He is a son. He is a servant. In John 14, 20, having said in verse 2 and 3, give me John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, read for me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Next verse. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And if I go, I will come. I am the one that will go, but my going is my coming. It's like we do in Nigeria. I'm going, then I said, are they come? Are they come? What it means is I'm going to come back. Jesus is saying, if I go... Yet that going is the coming back. The coming back is for you. That where I am, you may be. So the going is the reason why you will be where I am. Are we teaching here? It's not a future event. It is what will happen upon his resurrection. The going is dead burial and resurrection. The coming back is the indwelling. As a result of my death, burial, and resurrection, I will live inside you. So my going is my coming into you. The indwelling of the spirit. Then because of that, 
in that same context, he now says in John 14, 20. John chapter 14, verse 20. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. At that day, which day was that? Resurrection. So in my resurrection, you shall know that this campaign promise has been fulfilled. I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Is that a reality today? If it's a reality, shout glory. Now write this down. That means Christian living is an expression of Christ himself. That means Christian living is an expression of Christ himself. Christian living is an expression of Christ himself. Christian living is not towards Christ. Christian living is through Christ himself. It's not toward, I'm not trying to live towards Christ. It's Christ in me living through me. It's not an effort-based thing. It is Christ at work. So we have worked everything around Christ. The gospel, the plan of salvation. That's why I said you should off notice the word soteria. I said there's a soterion. Which is the process of it. You know the first day we dealt with process. My eyes have seen the salvation of our God. Acts 28, 28. Acts chapter 28 verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. The salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. That is, there's a process. There are events to it. And the events to it will include what we are talking about now. The diconia. The diconia, the minister or the ministry. So the diconia is in the church. We must see the Lord and the Christ. The Lord and the Christ. The sotar, the savior. John 14, 20. Where I am, you may be also. Read for me, John chapter 14, verse 20. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So can we say that Jesus' ministry continued after the resurrection? Huh? Yes. So the glorifying of that ministry is that it is in more than one person today. The glorifying of Jesus' ministry is that that ministry now is distributed among all of us. So where Jesus alone was the minister, by Christ living in you now, he has made all of us ministers of the gospel. Christ in you makes you a minister because he himself is the minister of the circumcision. Sakolata. That's why when people teach grace and not know that in the epistles, grace was used more for ministry than salvation. Grace was used for the things of the spirit. Grace was used for serving the Lord. <laughs> So when he said, the works I do shall you do also. Does that incorporate ministry? Power city? Does that incorporate ministry? Yes. So we are saying where Paul will get his verbiage from or his vocabulary. Look at John 14, 11 to 13. John 14, 11 to 13. Read for me, girl. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Next verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Next verse. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That will I do. That's the indwelling. Not because I'm going to run away. You will now compete to beat my record. <laughs> I go to my father is a short form of saying where I am, 
you may be also. I go to my father is a short form of saying where I am, you may be also greater. Greater works. What is greater? I am not the one doing it now. The greater is that all of us are doing it together. The greater works is that all of us, Christ in us, we are all ministers of God doing the work of Christ together. That's the greater. Now watch this. In John chapter 17, are you still in the building? Are you getting blessed this morning? Okay. John chapter 17. Now before we go there. So that means we share in the sonship of Christ. And we also share in the ministry of Christ. That's what it means. We share in the sonship of Christ. And we also share in the ministry of Christ. What will Christ be in the four gospels without ministry? Dr. Gabriel, what will Christ be in the four gospels without ministry? Eh? Carpenter. Finish. Carpenter. That's all. What will it be without ministry? Carpenter. Finish. <laughs> in fact, one local carpenter. One local carpenter. That's all. In one corner of town. Not even a national brand. <laughs> now I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm very serious. That's all it will have been. <laughs> Remove servanthood from Christ and there's nothing to write about him. What you call Lord or what you always sing. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I, I want to be more like you. It's a song for ministry. I want to be more like you in service, in laying down my life for the brethren. That's what that song is saying. It's not, I want to be more like you in right. I'm already in righteousness. But it's in service, in ministry. Remove the ministry of Christ from the four gospels. You just have the tales of a damsel who by dream saw an angel and claimed she was pregnant for nobody. That's all you will have. Who grew up and became a carpenter in the father's workshop. And so his dad being a gentleman decided not to divorce his mother. He just patched her along. Remove the ministry of Jesus and there's nothing to copy. Remove the ministry of Jesus and there's nothing to emulate. So Jesus is the model son and he's the model servant. He's the model son and he's the model servant. What we actually see about Christ is his servanthood. Read for me John 17, 15 to 18. John chapter 17, verse 15 to 18. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Next verse. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Next verse. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Pay attention to verse. Baby, baby, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Read for me again. There's something I need you to notice. That's why I'm going back. Verse 15. Let's start again. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Jesus doesn't want you to leave the world, but you are praying to leave. He said, Father, I'm praying not that you should remove them. I need them in the world. Keep them. That's all. Keep them there. Because that's where I need them. That is where the action is. So you better make up your mind to leave home. 
Because we are not training you all of this training for you to just die and go. Nalayo, yo. This training is for work. And you have to, you have to exhaust the training on earth. And make maximum profit for Jesus. Before you leave this world. Am I talking to somebody? Tell your neighbor I'm going nowhere. Me and death. We have no connection. I have work to do. For the glory of Jesus. I'm not hearing a good amen. amen. He said keep them. He said I'm not praying for you to take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. Next verse. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Next verse now. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Next verse now. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Did you see world. that? As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Them sp specific people are all those that are born again. So every man a minister. So have I sent Pay attention, pay attention to verse 18. As you have sent me into the world, here is not the incarnation. That's the resurrection. Just like John 20, 21. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. This is resurrection. In other words, Jesus is authenticating the fact that the essence of the indwelling of the spirit is for the work of ministry. The essence of the indwelling of the spirit is for the work of ministry. You didn't receive the Holy Spirit to have a nice time to feel goose pimples, fall on the ground and be lying on the floor. I feel the anointing. No. You receive the Holy Ghost to go and be witnesses. You receive the Holy Ghost for ministry. Ministry is in the mind of the Father for giving the Spirit to you. So watch. Can you see that from these words, Jesus has bequeathed ministry on every believer? Hello? Jesus has bequeathed ministry on every believer. That's what I'm saying. It's not just about those 12 apostles of the Lamb or foundational apostles, but all those who believe their writings the same way. Look at that John 17, 21 to 24. John 17, 21 to 24. Read for me. That they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Next verse. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them. That they may be one even as we are one. Next verse. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Next verse. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. So he talks about an oikia, an oikia. A common place. He talks about a common family. He talks about a common father. That's what Jesus is saying here. He talks about a common place, an oikia. He talks about a common family. He talks about a common father. Then he talks about common works. A common place, a common family, a common father. Then he talks about common works. John 14, 2 to 3 and 13, a common walk. Okay? Then he talks about common identity. A common identity. John 14, 20, a common identity. Then he also talks about a common dwelling again. John 14, 23, a common dwelling. Let me go over it again. He talks about an oikia, a common place. A common family, a common father. Then he talks about common works, which is ministry for all of us. John 14, 2 to 3 and 13. A common identity. All of us have a common identity. John 14, 20. A common identity. Then John 14, 23. 
a common identity. Of course, he talks about a common dwelling. A common dwelling. John 16, 7 now. John chapter 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Next verse. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they believe not on me. Now pay attention. He will convince the world of truth. The world of truth. Now when you read he will convince the world of truth because they believe not on me. Can you now see that convincing is done by Christ through us? Convincing people is done by Christ through us. Because he convinces them first. Then by the indwelling, they are sent to the world. He convinces them first. Then by the indwelling, they are sent to the world. Very, very foundational. Then the work of that paraclete, the paraclete is through the church. The work of the spirit in convincing the world is through the church. So let's see it again. There is a common dwelling. There is a common dwelling. There is a common family. There is a common father. A common dwelling. A common family. A common father. Common works, which is ministry, common identity, and there's a common dwelling, and very vitally, we have a common ministry. There's a common dwelling, and very vitally, we have a common ministry. I'd like you to touch your neighbor's knee, shake it, and say, our ministry is common. We have a common ministry with Christ Jesus. And all of us are in this ministry. Everybody. Except you don't have Christ. Well, if you don't have Christ, you don't have a ministry. But the moment you have Christ, you are in the ministry. It's a common family. It's a common identity. It's a common dwelling. And very vitally, we have a common ministry. So, a ministry not found in Christ is not of Christ. A ministry not found in Christ is not of Christ. So when people like Paul say the ministry of Christ or the doctrine of Christ, by now I have taught you much and you know what that means. So common ministry, hence he says to them, do not depart from Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Luke 24, 49. I send the promise of my father upon you. Now let's drive home the points. Let's drive home the points. Obviously, in Paul's explanation of ministry, he didn't explain ministry from the blues. Paul didn't explain ministry just from the abstract mind. It has to sink. Now he can expatiate. Paul can expatiate. So therefore, the key ingredient for us will be this. Jesus will therefore walk through a man or through a people. Which one? Jesus will now walk through a man or through a people. Huh? 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 Through a people, collective, common family, common identity, common ministry, common dwelling. So Jesus will now walk through a people, not through a man, through a people. Where I am, there you may be also. A people or a man. Talk to me, citizens. A people. All 
all the words of Jesus were they directed to a particular person or a people? A people. So therefore, we need to walk back a little bit and take from his words things he said and see those things. From the Old Testament, we will look at it before we finally arrive at Paul to see Paul's ministry gifts. We will walk back a bit. Pastor Praise, you said what? Is a zero power. <laughs> so that when we say you are a minister of the gospel, you know what we are talking about. Then I will say you are a minister of God. Say, I have not seen a vision. You didn't see, did you see vision in anything we are teaching? He said, God has not called me. <laughs> God has not called you and you are born again. How did you born again? What bonnet you again? <laughs> Tell your neighbor you've been called. Tell your neighbor, understand the rudiments of that you're calling. It's very critical. So that when the devil comes with doubt to your mind, you just remember everything we have taught you as a background. You say, Satan is too late. I know better. I'm called by God. There's a ministry on my life. I owe my world ministry. And I will do ministry radically. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So like I said, we need to walk back a little bit and take from his words things Jesus said. Then we see those things that Jesus said, we will trace them from the Old Testament. Then when we have done that, we will now come to Paul to start Paul's ministry gifts. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Next verse. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Next verse. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Next verse. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now hold on there. Something noteworthy that he says after the resurrection. Pay attention now. Thou art the Christos, the son of the living God. Look at verse 17. Read for me, girl. Verse 17 of that scripture. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. By saying revealed. The word revealed is that in the past or in the future. Huh? F huh? Huh? Why not? Speak out now. Highest, you will get it wrong. I will correct you. Past or future? Huh? Revealed. Huh? Don't look at the tense. Look at the context. Flesh and blood has not revealed this. Is that present or future? Future. Post-resurrection. It relates with things in the future. Yes, it's the fact that he recognizes the incarnate Jesus as the son of God. But then Jesus points something very significant to him. Has not revealed this to you. Give me verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The word okoidomio, okoidomio, O-I-K-O-D-O-M-E-U-O, okoidomio notios ecclesian. That's a Greek word. Okoidomio Noitios Ecclesian, talking about an event, a constitution. By using the word notios, he personalizes it. Then the word Ecclesia, pay attention, is not Jesus' coinage. Again, when Jesus says, Church, I will build my church, he is taking the word church from Moses' writings. Please, Jesus did not quote himself. He taught from Moses and all the prophets. I will build my church 
post-resurrection is a word he took from Moses from the Old Testament. I will build my church. That therefore, it validates Paul's versatile and expansive teaching on the ecclesia, which is ecclesiology. Paul's versatile and expansive teaching on the ecclesia, which is what we call ecclesiology. I will build my church. Is this an event of the past or in the resurrection? Resurrection. That means that in the 40 days of teaching, Jesus explained the ecclesia to the disciples. Post-resurrection. During the fourth, please, I beg you, stay with me. During the 40 days of teaching, Jesus explained to those disciples the ecclesia. He explained my church. Okoidomio, notios ecclesian. Put together means, I will just like when he says, he founded the club. He founded the club. It's not a continuous work of founding. It's what has happened when it, was, when it has happened. So before we go further, look at the subtext of this. Just two chapters after. Matthew 18, 15. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 and 16. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Next verse. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Every word may be established. Look at the word brethren. Take with you two or three brethren. The word Adolphus. Then verse 17. Read verse 17 for me. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Tell it unto the ecclesia. That's a subtext. Now by that, by that, by, by, by saying that, they understood that language. They just understood what he was saying. Remember, the audience he was talking to understood what he was saying. It's an Old Testament phrase. Tell it to the ecclesia or tell it to the church. I will build my church. Tell it to the church. I will build my church. If you look at this series, we have already walked that around Israel of God. Israel is my firstborn. Huh? Huh? What is Jesus bringing out? As Elia said, the ecclesia is an Old Testament language. Just like it has bread, it has water, it has wine, it also has ecclesia. All these are Old Testament verbages. Moses gave bread. Moses gave wine. Moses gave water which was in the temple. But this is his own water. This is Jesus' own wine. This is Jesus' own bread. The same way this is Jesus' own ecclesia. Deuteronomy 31.30 Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse number 30. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Pay attention here. We will find words like ecclesia, which is the Greek meaning of an Old Testament word, kualal. Kualal. Q-A-L-A-L. Kualal. Kualal is the Hebrew word for ecclesia. Ecclesia is the Greek word for kualal. It refers to a company, an assembly, kualal, a company or an assembly. I said two things now. Number one, a company of people, a group. And number two, a gathering. 
Number one, a company of people, a group. Number two, a gathering together. Jesus used the word ecclesia both ways. Company will mean those who have a common identity. For example, a common identity. Look at Deuteronomy 31, 30 again. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse number 30. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. The words of this song of all the congregation of Israel. That is what is called the church. The congregation, the qualal. That is, they came together and he spoke to them. Look at Deuteronomy 32 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. I will speak. They came together and he spoke to them. He calls all of them earth. All of them together, he calls them earth as a subtext. Look at Exodus chapter 12 verse 6. Exodus chapter 12 verse number 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. The coming together of the congregation. That is, there is a gathering, number one. Number two, there is the people. Gathering, people. So the word kualal is both for the people who gather. Kualal is a word for the people who gather. So it's a word that has a dual purpose. The gathering and the people that gather. The gathering and the people that gather. Look at Exodus chapter 16 verse 3. Exodus chapter 16 verse number 3. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. The whole assembly there is not just the coming together, but the people itself. The people itself. Look at Joshua chapter 8 verse 35. Joshua chapter 8 verse 35. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded with Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. Congregation of Israel. So by Jesus saying, I will build my congregation. The import of those words was not lost on his immediate audience. They knew that that phrase, kualal, was used for the whole congregation of Israel. Like I will build my nation. Then two chapters after, he now talks about that nation gathering together. So put that in mind. Come to Acts 7.37. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse number 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Next verse. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. This is the sermon of Stephen, talking about the ecclesia, the qualal in the wilderness. So he just took his word straight from the mouth of Moses. Jesus just took his word straight from the mouth of Moses. I will build my church. Tell it to the church. Look at Hebrews 2.12. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 12. If you're still here, shout a powerful amen. amen. Good. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. In the midst of the church. So the writer of Hebrews writing to the Jews knew they will understand what he was saying. Now this Hebrews 2.12, he was quoting from Psalm 22.22 22 and 25. Psalms 
22, 22 and 25. You would have thought David was speaking about Israel. But the writer was talking about the Israel that is found in Christ. The Israel that is found in Christ. So Jesus saying the church will make your mind wander back to where? Huh? Huh? To Moses or Israel where? In the wilderness. My Israel. My nation. My congregation. So where will Jesus' is Israel and where will Jesus' is nation and where will Jesus' is congregation come from? Huh? Resurrection. They will come from his resurrection. Interestingly, listen well everybody. If you were in the days of the four gospels, you will see the qualal as the congregation or what they used to call the synagogue. So the qualal will be both the nation of Israel and the synagogue. The qualal will be both the nation and the synagogue. When they congregate and for further extension, what you call the temple. The temple. So Jesus definitely uses present tense event to explain future things or future events. He used the immediate event to explain future events. If you miss it here, you miss it all. If you miss what I'm about to say now. So Jesus' church will be the reality of the church of the Old Testament. That means the church of the Old Testament prefigures Jesus' church. Like he said, I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's resurrection. Matthew 16. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now Peter didn't understand. When Jesus said, I will give unto you the keys. You know what Jesus is saying? We will have shared authority. My authority will be your authority. Your authority will be my authority. So, we have a shared family. If you are writing down. We have a shared family. We have a shared dwelling place. We have a shared authority. We have shared deeds. Deeds. We have shared works. Works. We have shared ministry. We have shared father. We have shared family. And we have shared authority. No wonder Paul writing to a gentile nation could say all our fathers passed through the sea. Read for me as I close the service. Are you blessed? First yes. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 10. Read for me verse 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Next verse. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Next verse. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Next verse. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. He is talking to those that that way. And he's, you know, talking about the church. Referring to the church. So interestingly note this. That means that my church of Jesus. Is it pre-resurrection or post-resurrection? Post-resurrection. Which means that on the way to Emmaus, where is the way to Emmaus? No, no, no. Where do we find the way to Emmaus? Huh? Luke 24. Good. On the way to Emmaus, or Emmaus, yeah, what's the pronouncement? Emmaus. On the way to Emmaus, did Jesus also do an exegesis? On the church, huh? Yes, 
Pay attention. In the entire four gospels, the word ecclesia was used only three times. In the entire four gospels, the word ecclesia was used only three times. And it's obvious why. In the entire New Testament Greek, it is used 114 times. But in the four gospels, three times. But in the entire New Testament Greek, 114 times. But in the four gospels, just three. In the book of Acts, it is used as an assembly. And it is used primarily as an assembly in the book of Acts. Why? It's obvious because the book of Acts can only repeat or report the gathering. The book of Acts cannot report the bringing together of men in Christ as an eyewitness account. It can only report the gathering, but it cannot report the bringing of men in Christ. So the book of Acts will measure on it as an assembly of people in a place. Paul uses this phrase more than anybody else. In fact, this is almost exclusive to him. Paul uses that word 46 times in a literal form, and this is vital, majorly in the book of Corinthians. Let's see other references. The book of Revelation has it seven times in just two ch chapters. The word church. Revelation chapter 2 verse 3, the seven churches. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 12. I will declare your name in the midst of the ecclesia. Hebrews 12 22. The church of the firstborn. Now both references are not for physical gathering. But they are for the gathering in Christ. Which is the primary use of the word church. Take down the scriptures. Hebrews 2.12. Hebrews 12.22. And Revelation 2.3. All of them are gatherings. Gatherings. Book of Revelation. Hebrews has the spiritual meaning of church. Spiritual meaning of church. To those of us in Christ. Then James chapter 5 verse 14. Let him call for the elders of the church, of the ecclesia. Anyway, there's an argument there that James was talking about, <laughs> you know, the synagogue. Because when this book was written, the church still met a lot in the synagogue. So when he said the elders of the ecclesia, it means those who gather in the synagogue. Okay? Look at 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 13. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. Okay, that's the gathering. Look at Todd John chapter 6 verse 9. Todd John chapter 6 verse number 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephus, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Then Todd John verse 10. Todd John chapter 1 verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Gathering and assembly. So no doubt it appears that aside from the writer of Paul, who many people believe he was a disciple of Paul, every other person uses ecclesia, you know, um, like a few. They use the word ecclesia like a Jew. The gathering together. The gathering together. Of course, you know, the people no doubt, but more on the physical gathering. But look at the way Paul will put it as I'm closing the service. 1 Corinthians 10.32 Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Nor to the church of God. Jews, Gentiles, physical races, church of God, all of them in one. All of them in one. So Paul identifies the church of God as a people without a specific race. 
The church of God is not a Jew. The church of God is not a Gentile. Jews and Gentiles all in Christ is the church of God. How did you come into this church of God? Paul identifies the church of God as a people without a specific race. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. We have been all made to drink into one spirit. So which means you became a member of the church by spiritual birth. Not that your family started one church in your village so it became your family church. No, that's not a church. You just join it as a club. You are born into the church spiritually. You don't join church. You are born into the church of Jesus by spiritual birth. The other one you join physically is club. You are not inside church. You are just in a club. It's just that you think you are in a church. But you are not in Jesus' church. You can only be in Jesus' church by spiritual birth. Now notice, I said in Corinthians, Paul uses the word church a lot. And he uses that word in two ways. Number one, for the church as a people. And number two, for the church as a gathering. One is built on the other. The gathering is built on the people. The gathering is built on the people. Elsewhere apart from Corinthians will be Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 22. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 22. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Next verse, I like here. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Next verse. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church which is his body. So you are not in the church of Jesus if you are not in his body. How do you become Jesus' body? By being born of the spirit. Which is his body? So the church there will be those who are believers in the gospel. So Paul calls the church the ecclesia his body. The word soma. Soma. His body. And the interesting thing is that Paul calls this gathering together the person of Christ. That the entire body together is Christ himself. Is Christ himself. His body and he's the head. One body. One body. Did you get that? He's the head. You are his body. So the person of Christ is his church. Did you get that? The person of Christ is his church. So when you got born of the spirit, you became a member in that his body. Where he is the head. Do you follow that? So now, what is in the head comes into the body. If the head is a son, the body are sons. And if the head is a minister, the body are ministers. So you can't be in his body and not do ministry. Uh -uh. Then you are not in his body. Or you are a faulty part of his body. And there can be no fault in his body. So if you are in his body, you will do what he does. He's a servant. His body will serve. 
The head cannot be doing something and the body is not doing it. Eh? If the head is serving, what happens to the body? The body serves. If the head is preaching, what happens to the body? Now look at me, I'm preaching. Is my body not preaching along? My body is preaching. I'm moving along. Where my head goes, my body follows. So if you are a member of his body, you will do what the head does. If the head is in ministry, you the body, you are in ministry. Which is his body? The fullness of him that filleth all in all. He is the head to the body. We are the body. He is the head. The head is a son. The body are sons. By spiritual birth. The head is a servant. Because the head came to minister. So the entire body are a collection of ministers. Every man a minister. The calling on the head is the calling on the body. He came not to be ministered to, but to minister. So the entire body is the body of ministry. I'm teaching good here. See, I'm taking you through the foundation for what we call ministry as the church of God. And I'm doing a lot of exegesis because I want you to be established in the truth of the gospel. You have to serve Jesus, otherwise life is meaningless. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, outside ministry, why are you alive? Why are you alive? Why are you alive? Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Shout it now. Are you afraid of your neighbor? If you're afraid, change the seat. <laughs> Believe me, if you're afraid of your neighbor, change that seat now. Say neighbor. If I no do ministry, waiting again. Huh? Waiting again. Huh? 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 Waiting again. If you don't do ministry. Why do you have a job? To help you do ministry. Why are you doing business? To help you do ministry. Why do you marry your wife? To help you do ministry. Why did you marry your husband? To help you do ministry. Why do you have children in your marriage? To help you do ministry. You and all that you are. You are all ministry materials. Shibana. Shibana. Lengo la tobayada. Why did you go to school? To help you. If I didn't go to school, will I be chemist and be talking to you as a doest? <laughs> will I be chemist and be talking to you as a doest? I wouldn't be commerce the way I came as. It's because I went to school that I can teach you the way I teach. I'm teaching you because all my years of school is for ministry. Why? I'm a member of the body where the head is a minister. So he ministers his ministry through me. Shalot He's a son of God. So because I'm a part of his body, I am also a son of God. But he's also a minister. So because I'm a part of his body, I am also, say I will do ministry. Or I will do ministry. Or I will do ministry. And if your neighbor is not talking, lay hands on your neighbor now. On his head. Lay hands on his head. Say I will do ministry. Neighbor, I will do ministry. Or, I will do ministry. I will raise men. I will preach the gospel. I will raise disciples. I will build strong local churches for the glory of God. My life on earth 
will not be wasted by eating abu, afang, edikaikong, and going to toilet all my days. Eh, eh, eh. I eat abu to have energy to do ministry. Ministry is the end point of my life. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, I pray for you that you be filled with the knowledge of God's wisdom in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I declare over you through this year, your life will count for eternity. Through this year, your life will count in eternity. Through this year, your life will count in eternity. Now say to your neighbor, you will not be wasted. Your life will not be wasted. You are not an experiment. There's a call of God on you. You will serve the will of God. I'm not hearing a powerful amen. Stand on your feet. Say to your neighbor, you will serve the will of God in your generation. Say, God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Say, neighbor, I serve God with my spirit in the gospel of his son. I exercise myself that I may have a conscience in service without offense. I serve God from the sincerity of my heart with all my strength, with all my soul, with all my heart. I abandon myself in the ministry of the Lord Jesus to raise men, disciple men, and establish the glory of Jesus all over the nations of the earth. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Say to your neighbor again, neighbor, if I don't do ministry, what in again? Nothing. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The losing of your soul there is failing to fulfill God's purpose. Living a wasted life. Wasted life. Sometimes if you want to look at your life clearly and see how you cannot afford to play with the opportunity God is giving you. Look at how some politicians are. The moment they are out of political office, they retire to the village. They are totally useless. That's how life without a divine purpose ends. That's how it ends. Once upon a time, you were the one relevant. Everybody was, after a while, nobody looks at your side. You start degenerating like you never existed. But when your life is touching lives by the gospel, when your life is changing lives by the gospel, when you are the one bringing light into the darkness of men's hearts and shining the glorious light in the midst of men's confusions, you will remain relevant till eternity. Glory to God. See, I'm a partner with Jesus in ministry. It's an honor for me to serve God together with Jesus in the preaching of the gospel. I'm a man of God. Say it three times. Two more times. The third time. Now speak it like you are talking about what you know. Say I'm called by God. I'm anointed by God. For such a time as this. The sentence of God is in my mouth. I pursue the plan, the purpose, and the will of God for my life. The ministry of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. We're going to pray for another 60 seconds for one another. I'd like you to hold your neighbor wherever you're standing. Hold your neighbor. We're going to pray together. That your neighbor will be filled with zeal. That the zeal for ministry, the zeal for service will consume your neighbor. Let's pray together for one another. Jikola tababa sekele nemona. Legro da sekele de babro tapete pila tapata.
lango jakota legara tu sabara kadeda lengo jakolo totona galida baba barakita na kali nemona legro sakola tapaya legalana karatusa kaladada jekolo to bomra na gangele de bosa kalata babara rekoto lobo rokoto sekele de bobo thank you father that you have made us able ministers of the new testament not of the later that kill it but the spirit that give it life not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god legoroto sikala na mana legato bila na mandre rakotola bora katene kelida baba bosha kala na masota we serve god's purpose we serve god's will we serve god's mandate to his body we serve god's purpose to our generation we fulfill the mandate we fulfill the call we fulfill the purpose we fulfill the assignment of god lagoro sokelete baya legato mbalata baya legara da shikala na masotete anga zobea 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 agarato sekelida baba angele rebo shatata aga zobea aga zobea aga zobea aga zobea aga zobea strengthen with might by the spirit in the inner man we serve god's purpose we stay focused we are not distracted we serve the purpose of god to our generation we preach the gospel we shine the light in the dark places of the earth we shine the light in the communities of the earth we shine the light in the hearts of men we preach the gospel in and out of season we are unmovable we are always abounding in the labor in the labor of ministry we are steadfast legarota shaka agabazo bia nangranda sukala agaya shabaragadaza agasoberegede shaya angelere mosanda agala to betete 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 up your mouth and pray for your neighbor Pray for your neighbor. You're steadfast. You're unmovable. You're always abounding in the work of the Lord. You're always abounding. You're faithful in the ministry. You're faithful in serving Christ. You're faithful in pursuing the mandate. You're faithful in pursuing the call of God. You make your calling an election sure. You're diligent. You're diligent in ministry. You serve God's purpose. Ligarata Sukalaba. You're sold out. Engemo Sata Teta. Engemo Sata Teta. Hey! Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'd like you to lay your two hands on your head. Pray for yourself right now. Father, let the zeal for ministry consume me totally. I give you my strength. I give you my body. I give you my mind. I give you my resources. I serve you with all that I have. Pray for yourself. I serve you with all my heart. I serve you with all my strength. I serve you with all my soul. I serve you in the gospel. I serve your purpose. I yield myself. I yield myself. The zeal of the house of God has consumed me. I am sold out. I am passionate about the gospel. I yield myself to preach this gospel. Legarato Sekelenemaya. Use me, Lord. Use me in my generation. Use me in my city. Use me in my community. I am a light. I'm a light in my nation. Cause my light to shine. I raise men. I raise disciples. Pray for yourself. Zilo Bashakaya. Zilo Shikaba. Zilo Shakala Zilo Shakala Ratom Baragadas Ratom Baragadas Ratom Baragadas The power of God is in this building Zizazazazaza Online on television on radio The power of God is all over this place Ligarato Sika Barakatu Mala Rikato Barakatu Nekelina Mamaya Aya shakala rabas. 
In the name of Jesus. Can I hear that amen like thunder? I want to pray for you. Let me hear that amen like thunder. He said, Joshua the high priest was standing. And the angel of Satan was standing by. And Zachariah said, Is this not a brand plucked out of fire? Shikalotaba, hear me, I hear me well. I declare you are a brand plucked out of fire. You will burn all the days of your life. Everywhere you enter, you will be a burning fire. See, is this not a brand plucked out of fire? The Lord rebuke you, Satan. We are this brand is concerned. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. We are this brand is concerned. But today, by the finished work of Christ, Satan, I rebuke you. We are these brands are standing. We resist the devil. He has no hold on you. Your body is well. Every symptom of disease in your body, I command it to be flushed out. Flushed out. Flushed out. High blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, heart disease. You are corrected right now. You are corrected right now. Body be healed. Body be well. Body be healed. Body be well. Body be healed. For this purpose, the Son of God is manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil, having spoiled principalities and powers. Agayano Shatata, whatever is not planted by my heavenly Father shall be rooted out. So I declare it is rooted out. It is rooted out. It is rooted out. Infirmity, break your holes. Break your holes. Break your holes. In the name of Jesus. Body be well. Seeing that the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He likewise himself partook of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Every fear of death around you, I command it to disappear. The fear of death be broken. The fear of death be terminated. You have now received the spirit of bondage again to fear. God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of love of power and of a found mind. Every fear of the future, every fear of tomorrow, you spirit of fear, I silence you in the name of Jesus. Zianos. Zitu latatata. See your future. See ministry. See yourself flourishing in ministry. See yourself changing lives. See yourself taking territories. See yourself taking cities. See yourself shaking nations. You have future in ministry. The devil can do nothing about it. In the name of Jesus. You serve God. You serve God with your spirit in the gospel of his son. I call you a barrier breaker. I call you a city taker. I call you a mountain mover. I call you a line crosser. Wherever you are found, you will make a difference. Zialo shakalata. Through this year, you will run and not be weary. Strengthen with might by his spirit in the inner man. The healing power of God is moving now. All over this house, all over the online community, all over the campuses, the healing power of God is moving from your head to the soles of your feet. The healing power of God, yeah, 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 yeah. The healing power of God is moving all over this place through your organs, from your head to the soles of your feet. The healing power of God is moving through your body. All your organs are refreshed. All your system refreshed. Your blood is refreshed. Every infection flushed out. In the name of Jesus. Body be well. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, it shall be forgiven him. Every voice of fear is silenced forever. In the name of Jesus. Arise and do ministry. Arise and do ministry. Arise and serve God's purpose. No more procrastination. You are steered up by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I have that amen on a note of finality?